Okay, caveats for my channel, Light Hierarchy, Boba Fett is Iconic Design. My name is Eric Kennedy, you are watching Redraw, and today I'm drawing Bo-Katan. Couple things right off the bat, this video isn't meant to be instructional, so yeah, I'm gonna fail you if that's what you're here for. Nine times out of ten, I'm just going to be sharing with you what's going on in my head as I'm drawing the thing. So if there's something that you can take away from that, incorporate into your own work, then cool. So take what I'm saying with a certain grain of salt. I'm going to just be painting and making an awful lot of mistakes. I'm not an educator. I'm not an instructor. I just really like drawing. The second thing is that I know Star Wars, but I don't know Star Wars, you know? So if your comment is, Hey, that jetpack is wrong, or that gun is off, or that Mandalorian armor isn't up to code, then yeah, got me. Okay, let's talk about the drawing. So we're a little above a minute into this time lapse and if you've recognized I didn't do any thumbnails and for me that's okay thumbnails are important but I think I've done something similar compositionally before and ultimately my challenge it was to try and render Mandalorian armor so I wanted to get to that as soon as I could forget all that thumbnailing man let's go I'll tell you this when I started rendering the pouches it became really super daunting. I thought, man, look at all this freaking detailing I need to get to. I think it ends up paying off in the end, but in the moment, my eyes started to glaze over, trying to think about how much time it's going to take to render everything. The concept for this painting is pretty simple. It's to try to capture that scene when we see Catan, Woes, and Reeves for the first time, when they landed on that fishing barge from the show Mandalorian. Um, I'm not going to get, like I said, I'm not going to get the details right, but it was going to be, I thought, a fun and challenging exercise, so I thought I'd give it a go. Did you know that in the original Empire Strikes Back script, they describe Boba in about a dozen words or so, uh, and here's his description. A man in a weapon-covered armored spacesuit, and that's it. So it's pretty crazy to think that you fast forward X amount of decades and we have a show like The Mandalorian. All of this lore and we have all of this history, we have all of this design. We have a brand new show with a bunch of supporting characters, all based on 11 words, about six minutes of runtime in the original trilogy. That's pretty iconic. I have this term I like to use, it's called light hierarchy. I use it to describe my value structure, the way I render things in black and white. That helps to make everything as legible as possible. The closer you are to that light source, the more rendered, more contrasty you are. The further away you are from that light source, the more it goes into shadow and gray, and uh, it's less rendered. Pretty simple. Light hierarchy not only helps to identify the shape and um, structure of a volume, but from time to time, it can help with the rendering properties of materials. Some materials reflect light, other materials absorb light, and in this case, I was using the armor to put it in such a way in the composition that it draws your eye to it. So sometimes it's super helpful. So like in this image as an example, I'm using the reflective properties of the chest armor to um, make that the hot spot of the of the entire composition, which means your eye will have a tendency to gravitate towards that area. Um, also, I'm gonna do the same sort of technique on the shine of this helmet, which means this area of the image is going to have the highest point of contrast, the hottest highlight. That um, detail, that design on the main Mandalorian's helmet, that's a night owl helmet. I know her name, calm down nerds, it's Burkcom. Burkcom. Burke Tire, Boca Tire. Um, I actually did take the time and effort to go look up reference for this thing because if I'm going to get everything else wrong, I figured this one was worth looking up. Even after looking it up, I, I suspect I still 
didn't do it correctly. Rendering this helmet was challenging for me because um, as many times as I've rendered a dome-like shape like this in the past, for whatever reason, I just can't seem to retain that information. So I kind of have to relearn it each and every single time. I think there's something genuinely wrong with my brain. So as I'm kind of struggling through, trying to figure out exactly how light wrap around the shape of this helmet, it took me several tries. And the astounding thing is, by the time I get to the adjacent Mandalorian to the right there, I'd have completely forgotten it. So there you go. I think I have, uh, I have a vitamin deficiency because I forget stuff. You just saw me adjust the brightness on her shoulder earlier. And that is because in a dimensional drawing, I'm trying to emulate a three dimensional space. One of the tricks that I use in order to help communicate that three dimensional space is to stack information. In case of this image, I position her in front of the other Mandalorian, but also I help to delineate the space between the two of them by having her uh, more contrasty in the foreground. Contrasty is a real word, I promise. Halfway through the video, uh, you just saw the little animation things there go across the screen, so if you could do me a favor, if you like what you've seen, like and subscribe, and if you want, leave a comment below. I'd really appreciate it. Oh, and by the way, uh, follow me on all my social media, Instagram, Twitter, very active in both of those platforms under Eric Kennedy. It's taken all of my control not to apologize for the quality and polish of this first video. I kind of did this on my own, and now that I'm scrubbing through it, it looks really awful and unprofessional, but, but what are you gonna do? I just wanted to have my first video out, that way I can kind of understand what works, what doesn't work. Um, but uh, I wanted to apologize to you and thank you for uh, hanging around even though this thing is clipping all over the place. So thanks. There's nothing more annoying to me than thinking about having to stop and look at reference for guns, but Star Wars has a very specific look to its universe, even for its props, so that's why I'm kind of struggling here, trying to come up with a reasonable, fairly in-world version of that gun. I know I could have looked up reference, but... Yeah, I just felt like painting, man. Remember when I said I had issues in painting these helmets? If you pay attention to what I did with uh, Axe's helmet, because I really didn't think that it captured the volume of a cylindrical helmet with the, uh, the dome top. So I'll come back and re-render that because it really bothered me how flat it looked. So there you go, struggles. Moving on to Reeves. I don't really spend too much time on rendering her at all. Um, I think it's ideal because she's further back in the perspective, so I do just enough to uh, adhere to the light source, um, enough to identify volume, like her helmet and her shoulder pads and her chest armor. But as far as the noodly stuff that I did with uh, Katan in the foreground, it's um, relatively more simple. I think iconic design really elicits an emotion, right? And that emotion uh, helps to supplement or complement the original intent of the thing that it's been designed for, right? So if you think about the Xenomorph from Aliens, if you think about Super Mario Brothers, an iPod, a car, a pair of shoes, something that's been designed, right? Think about your personal connection with that item and really think about the emotional space that it puts you in. So in the case of like the Mandalorians, they're supposed to look mysterious. They're supposed to look sort of like badasses, right? Because they were originally designed to be, you know, elite stormtroopers. And so, yeah, I think that's why their design persists because they still help to elicit that emotion that was originally intended for them. Let me say this up front. Environments are very, very important. I think they are critical in landing sort of the look and feel and, and the atmosphere of your, of your shot. Uh, but I'll also say this, they are a giant pain in the butt to render. It was, and it will always be a struggle for me, to get to them and also do it in such a way that they are complementary to the, to the characters in the shot. But if you plan it well and execute the environment correctly, it really does have a tendency to make the entire image so much more believable. It adds so much atmosphere, it adds an extra layer of character. So when you're seeing me struggle through uh, painting the deck of this ship, um, I really was bought into the idea that this was going to be a really nice way to pull the whole thing together by putting the characters in a 
unbelievable grounded space. So the last bits of the time lapse is just me doing the effects from the water splashes to Reeves' jetpack on the deck there of the boat. And I think near the end, I add a tiny bit of blur effect. I'm not necessarily all that convinced that it works, but I put it in there anyway as an added layer. Um, yeah, so there you go. Okay, so that's the first video out of the way. Thank you for listening. Like and comment below. Subscribe if you haven't done it already. And there's a little, I think there's a little tiny notification bell down there. Click that so you know when my next stuff goes up. Thanks a lot.